Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Unmechanical. This is a brand spanking new, uh, I almost said point and click adventure, which is not true. This is like a physics based puzzler, which it feels like if I'm playing a game that just came out on Steam, it's either point and click adventure, physics based puzzler, or I don't know, maybe like some kind of modified tower defense game. But in any case, Unmechanical, this is a pretty fresh Let's Look at. I've only gotten the game earlier this afternoon and had maybe an hour, hour and a half of total play myself, but Unmechanical really really impressing me so far so I could continue but as anyone knows if you're a fan of the Northern Lion let's look at always do a little bit better yes that's fine you can erase my existing progress uh, always do a little bit better when I am playing the um, you know puzzles that I've already done myself and to be honest with you I did not see this cutscene the first time so I'm kinda interested to see what happens here basically we are playing as one of these robots and the game is very minimalistic very simplistic and very much Based on the idea of, you know, you trying to like improvise your- Oh, there we go. That's what happens, I guess. <laughs> Based on the idea of you trying to like improvise and learn about your environment as you go. So I did see this screen when we first got started. I think once we go down through this pipe, this should be the end. The end of the opening, anyway. Or maybe just the beginning of the end of the black screen, hopefully. So this is a UDK joint. Underground Kings? No, of course. Unreal Development Kits? I think I'm just going to skip over the rest of the introduction screen here. The splashes that should normally be at the start of a game, uh, like when you boot it up for the first time, but for some reason here, uh, up here in the opening cutscene. But in any case, okay, we are this robot right now. So by using our arrow keys or WASD, you can move around. Take a little dip in the water. If we hit the F1 key, it will give us a like vague hint system, I believe. I kind of want to do this. Okay, let's just get this over with. All right, so we using the space bar, we can pick things up. That is all he's telling us, basically. And those are all the controls that you need for on mechanical. So like, as in a lot of physics-based puzzlers, we are a spaceship type thing. This particularly reminds me of like insanely twisted shadow planet. Oh, get out of there! And we only really have one tool here, and it's basically this this grabber and lifter uh, that we can use to carry rocks with us and you know use those to depress switches and and jam gears and stuff like that and that is what makes up the the fundamentals of my time with on mechanical so far so I think we want to go up here hit this switch oh hit the switch and then move on so why am I enjoying on mechanical so much so far a lot of you are probably saying this looks like a pretty standard by the way these are like uh, the, the blue gates in Portal, like if I try to take a rock through these, it just won't go. Um, it looks like a pretty standard puzzle platformer, a lot, of, a lot of you guys are probably saying. Not really puzzle platformer, but physics puzzler. Uh, you're not necessarily wrong. And I mean, when I first started playing, I was like, man, I mean, it, it's interesting and aesthetically appealing, but the puzzles seem too easy. But very, very quickly, uh, it becomes more and more... It, it kind of reminds me of being like in kindergarten or something. This is a very pretentious way of phrasing it, but... Uh, the game doesn't bother with a tutorial like, Robot, Robot, figure out how to do this, like, you gotta put rocks on switches to depress them, instead it just kinda like, depress them, I should say. Uh, instead it just kinda pits you in this environment, uh, and then it's your job to figure out just what the fuck you are supposed to do. So the first time you come in here, you're like, okay, I don't understand, is this even a puzzle? Maybe you grab this thing, pull it up, you see this ball go through here, but you're like, I don't really understand. I mean, it's a switch, so it's gotta be related to the puzzle, right? And then maybe you remember, oh right, there's some rocks over here. Maybe I could use one of these rocks, put it up here, and then get that red ball for myself. But you don't really know what the red ball is for, you just have a vague feeling that, hey, this red ball is probably a little bit useful. So we'll get this to come for us, get the red ball, and then carry it with us. So obviously we are uh, susceptible to like the weight of the object. We want to make sure that we are strong enough to lift these heavy objects out of here. Obviously this tiny rock is probably going to go very easily, but this larger rock might be a little bit more of a stretch. I think we just, oh, yeah, it's gonna be slow, but we're gonna be able to get it through. And then, of course, now, after moving these rocks, you realize, oh, this is what we need the red ball for. If you put it down here, the, the rocks are too thick to get through there. But the red ball lands on it just fine, which will open up this gate for us. So, yeah, th this kind of element, I mean, it, it kind of becomes, it, it flies in the face of the improvisation and experimentation element of the game that I am basically explaining what's up with the game right now. However, that is what I loved about it so much so far, at least. The puzzles so far, it might seem like right now they're super easy. I mean, most of you who are looking at this can probably surmise that this is about to be like a Simon-type puzzle right here. I assure you they get more difficult and more physics-based 
as you move on in the game. I have been stuck several times for, you know, upwards of 5-10 minutes per puzzle. So by doing this, we trigger Simon. We're gonna go yellow, blue, red. Yellow, blue, red. Okay, so let's get these going. It'll be yellow. This will be blue. And this will be red. These are pretty much the tutorial puzzles as well. It's worth noting. Uh, soon we will enter like the hub world, which is where the majority of the game takes place. Blue, blue, yellow, red. Blue, blue, yellow, red. Okay, let's get this done. Blue. Oh, blue is next. Almost went straight to yellow. Blue, blue, yellow, red. Yellow. And red. Excellent. And we'll do one last one, and then I'll talk a little bit more about some other things that I'm really enjoying about On Mechanical so far. I might be gushing. Yellow, yellow. Green. Green. Yellow. That's easy. Yellow. Yellow. Green. Green. Yellow. Perfect. So this is gonna pop open. Uh, so other things I really like about On Mechanical, again, don't mean to gush here. But, uh, the controls are pretty much perfect, like, I'm coming from a perspective of somebody who has just spent some time with some games that I felt did not control that well, not to name any names yet, just in case uh, those videos have not gone up yet. However, if they have gone up, they, you'll probably recognize which games I'm talking about. I'm pretty much just using WASD to move and our spacebar here to grab the object, so it's very, very simple, but it absolutely 100% works. And because of the simplicity of the gameplay mechanics, it makes you feel like... Like, the puzzles, it, the tools to solve the puzzles are always in your repertoire. Like, at first, when I first started playing, because it doesn't give you, like, a tutorial explicitly or anything like that, I thought this might be a Metroidvania, like, similar to Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet, where you'll go around and occasionally you'll pick up these extra objects. Hey, where are you going, buddy? Get, no, that's, oh, okay, well, he's in the hatch for good. Uh, well, you'll go around and occasionally you'll pick up these objects that will help you progress to, like, further and further areas in the game, as, as you backtrack, I should say. Um, but it's not. Uh, as far as I can understand, the whole game pretty much just you flying around, moving objects around. So it is pretty pure as puzzlers go. So for this one, you can probably surmise, if you look at each one of these switches, they cause those, uh, what would you call them? I don't know, like stoppers to get out of the way. And when we get those out of the way, if they're all blue and thus all open, we can actually get that object. We, we spend a lot of our time collecting these big glowing balls, as you can see in the upper right here. So what we want to do for this one, and this one took me a long time. Maybe I'll, first I'll show you the wrong solution. But actually, let's let's see if we can carry this beam with all three of these over here at once, because that would save me some time. No, it's just a little bit too heavy. You can carry two, it seems. Well, very easy to carry one. So let's just put the beam here for now. When I first played this, I didn't realize the beam was an object that I could pick up. I think I tried, and it just ended up being too heavy, or I gave up too early, or something like that. Imagine that, me failing to uh, failing to surmise a pretty easy puzzle element in a puzzle game. For anyone who's seen, for example, let's look at Stealth Bastard, where I just got screamed at in the comments for missing an obvious puzzle. You might understand. So what I was trying to do with this one the first time was figure out, okay, we need three of these to have enough weight in order to depress one of the switches. But we only have four things total. We can just get this third one to actually sit up here. This is the wrong solution, by the way. But I thought, and I still think it sort of works. Okay, so we've depressed one. Now, we don't need to hit this one, because this one actually causes the flow to stop. So what I thought is like, let's drop this one from a height where it can depress the switch, like right here, and then we'll fly down and try to get it going at the same time. The problem is you don't really keep the flow uh, unimpeded for very long. You only keep it unimpeded for like a fraction of a second, if even that. Sometimes this will depress the switch, I promise you. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. It's hard to get it simultaneously, but anyway, that's the wrong way to do things. The right way to do things is to actually put our switches, or our, our blocks on these switches like this, put it down here, and then move our beam up on top of them, which will have enough weight spread out over the, uh, the three oh, boxes here, which should allow us yeah, to depress all three of those and then get our ball out here. So we'll take that, and then we will move on. So yeah, fluid controls. I really like the sense of exploration that they've got going on. I guess I have to hold on to this for a little while. Uh, and, and the sense of kind of experimentation that they've got going on as well. There's no, I mean, there is a hint system that I haven't really used. I believe that's just from tapping F1. Uh, but I kind of like just figuring out the rules of the environment myself. Like for example, if you look at this one, 
Let's pull this switch first and you can see what it does. Okay, this moves the outermost one like one third of a uh, like a rotation here. If we move this one, you can see it moves the two outermost ones. And if we move this one, it'll move the three outermost ones. And it moves them all in uh, varying patterns or varying uh, distances, I guess I should say. So maybe if we just do this one more time, this might work. Oh wow, I didn't expect to actually get that puzzle so quickly. That one took me a long time the first time. Uh, but it certainly got the job done there. That probably wasn't the fastest possible solution, but it was still pretty quick in my eyes. So yeah, fluid controls, great sense of exploration, experimentation, and just kind of figuring things out for yourself, which I, I really like. And beyond that, uh, really great soundtrack so far. There's been times when it's been uh, more ambient than melodic, which is totally cool. I mean, this is a puzzle game. You don't necessarily need like a, a sweeping orchestral score or anything like that. What it really reminds me of is stuff like, you could think like maybe... Uh, Aphex Twin, like selected ambient works, stuff like that, or even sometimes when it gets, when it picks up a little bit, it reminds me a lot of Boards of Canada, which is a band that I talk a lot about in these videos, but I think a lot of uh, game composers, at least uh, that compose primarily in electronic music, take a lot of influence from bands like Aphex Twin and Boards of Canada, so it's not an unwarranted comparison. So this is our hub world, where I'm in my main game, I was stuck for a while, and where I kind of am still. So what we're gonna do is just drag this ball down to this matrix-like arm here. And that will open up a door for us, I believe, on this side. And maybe we'll do- oh, it's up there. Maybe we will do, uh, just like one wing of puzzles here, because I don't want to spoil things too much. And I hate this puzzle also. <laughs> I would like to remind you guys that, uh, or not remind, I guess, but, uh, uh, yeah, remind is the right word. That getting to where I got in my actual game took me about an hour of blind play, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. And we are probably about 50 to 60% of the way to uh, where I was. So it's it's one of those games where, you know, it probably doesn't have that much replayability because every single time you're gonna be doing pretty much exactly the same thing. If you know the solutions, it's gonna happen very fast. But I've heard from some reliable sources that, uh, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, you're playing it through totally blind on mechanical, might run you as much as four hours, which is pretty sizable for a, uh, you know, a $10 puzzle platformer like this. By the way, this is $10. So obviously what we want to do in this puzzle is get all of these passages lined up so that we can actually get up there through the top where our gate is. So when I did this the first time, you can see like even with zero weight, they're all set at like different levels. But there's three different kinds of boxes, like small, medium, and large. So I think what we want to do is put a large one on the one that's the furthest back, which I think is our fourth one all the way down here. Wait, actually, I think there's a super large box, too. Is this... I think these are even bigger. So let's put this one, like, down here. And then we'll try to get all of our other scales to match this one. So we think this... the This one is pretty close. So what we'll do with that one is maybe just put one medium-sized box on, and we'll maybe add a small if we need to tweak it a little bit. All right, well, that actually looks perfect. And then we have one that's very far away, so I think we might want two mediums for that one. Is that this one right here? No. Well, let's see if one medium will do this one. Yeah, we could probably swing that. And then we just got to figure out what combination of these ones will actually work. I think it's going to be two mediums. That's close, but it won't quite do it. It might be medium small. We'll see. There's probably multiple ways to solve this puzzle, I'm assuming. But that is one of them right there. That one took me a long time to do on my first time. Eventually what I ended up doing is just trying to like... I, like I took all the weights off the scales and then tried to figure out how much each box weighed and then was like, okay, I can solve this mathematically if I so choose. So you can see there's a switch here. Switch doesn't work. That's bad news. We can do a sweet little dance here though if we so choose. Didn't mean for that to rhyme. Now, this happens on a lot of rooms in non-mechanical. You move around and you're like, hey, there's only really two objects in this room that I can interact with apart from that switch. There's this rock and there's this gear. So, you know, it's pretty easy, I guess figure out what you want to do there. We are just gonna jam that gear. And as the gear comes down here, it should pop open. Whoa, almost got hit there. As far as I know, there's no way to die. I've never come across a way to die anyway. And that opened the door for us, which is cool. And I think we're coming to maybe the puzzle that I will do last. This is kind of cool. You just kind of tag on to this thing until things actually open for good. And you get that nice little Zelda tone that tells you that you are moving onwards. I think this is the last puzzle that I'm gonna show. This is just a transitory area right here. 
Sometimes it can be a little diff difficult to tell what's in the background and what's in the foreground. So yeah, this will be the last puzzle that I cover in the video. But this is a cool puzzle and, again, another one that kept me stuck for a long time. So this is uh, similar, you know, to a quantum conundrum or portal type puzzle where we have this laser beam coming out of here and in order to open this door at the end, we have to get the laser to hit this thing right here and actually fill up this meter on the left side, which can take... It means you have to not just make it happen in like a matter of seconds. You've got to hold it there for at least a little while, not just a you know, quick one and done. So what we can do here, you can see we've got these four platforms that we can rotate. We can rotate them with the space bar, like so. So if you wanted to maybe, maybe you're thinking like, okay, I can ro rotate this one up here, and then maybe I can rotate this one all the way around. I apologize for the space bar tapping, but then you see, oh, this doesn't really work. So you think, all right, I'll rotate that one out of the way. This one can't hit anything else, so I'll, you know, just make this one flat. And then I'll grab this one and start this one on its merry way. Maybe we'll go up to this one in the top left corner, and then maybe we can rotate this one so it'll go in the one for the top right corner, and then we can just rotate this one and get a hit in or something. This one obviously is not quite right. Then you think, oh, well, okay, maybe there's no way to make it happen this way. I'm gonna spoil things a little bit. The way that this works is you actually have to come down to the water for a second and realize, oh, there's a number of mirrors actually underwater, so we're gonna make this one I think this is how I did this anyway we're gonna make this one focus on the one in the water yes which will then bounce this one up and I think I can then make this happen bounce it off that third mirror underwater which will then allow us to set up a nice angle here and I don't even think we use the one in the top left yes and yes I think this is what we wanted to do as you can see the meter filling up there and now we can exit. And that is the end of this first wing of this hub world. I hope I haven't spoiled anything for people out there who are uh, really interested in On Mechanical. Rest assured, there's a lot more to see. But in any case, this is where I'm going to stop my video. Uh, definitely two thumbs up so far for On Mechanical. I'm having a great time with it so far. One of the better puzzle platformer games I've played so far this year. Seems reasonably long and at only $10. Definitely a steal. Uh, you know, music, graphics, controls puzzle design, and just a nice little childlike sense of wonder kind of get peaked from playing this game. So on Mechanical, definitely a winner. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.